mouse is a living, breathing thing and it wakes up with its owner, it goes to sleep with its owner. It's my environment and I do use it a hell of a lot. You know, it's, it's, you know, it is part of me. I think it is like a second skin. We've created a world we really like and we've made an effort to do that. And I really like that, it's, that it's our choice of how it is. The home is one of the most problematic building types in that it has the most emotion and the most tradition associated with it. So that our perception of what a home is and what it looks like and how it should behave and how it should function is very, very fixed. And it's been fixed over, over decades and centuries. And there is a very strong cultural construct about the domestic dwelling. Throughout the history uh, of housing, you can look at the housing that's developed in a particular period and relate it to the sort of vision of society at that time. So we've seen various housing movements, various styles of housing evolve that meet the society's uh, needs. And you know, I think we're at this really interesting point where the home has to reflect these you know, cultural values that we as a society are moving on and taking much more interest in sustainability. And I think. The goal is to create a model that, that makes that an integral part of, of the future housing. It's about creating a place that people love to be, that actually meets their needs in every area of their life. That's the sort of utopian vision, and that continues to be important. But what makes people comfortable, what people cherish, what people value, I suspect is changing. I would really like a house which, whether it be the smallest details or the biggest, just generally significant changes that could make it different, like going around your house, a different experience each day. That would be very interesting. I would be lost without the internet nowadays, I think. We shop on the internet and it's interesting and email is useful. One of the things that we have to understand as far as the context is concerned is what we do at home and how that is evolving continuously. That includes working, that includes playing, that includes caring, that includes learning, cooking, etc. You know, all of these things are the patterns of life. If you ask yourself, how much water did you use yesterday? Well, how will you know? How much electricity did you use? How many hours are you sitting? How many, you don't know. We don't know our patterns of life, really. There's been a lot of research on them over time. But the thing that really interests me when we look ahead 25, 35, 45 years, how those patterns will change. As those who expect instantaneous multiple communication modes become older, they'll begin to wonder, why doesn't my environment do this as well? We need our homes to help us live. If you've got a small handbag, then you fit what you have in that handbag. But if you've got a larger handbag, you can fit everything. You, you will fill that handbag. I think the home's kind of like this. And I think you sort of grow into the property. We have adapted the house as the years have gone by and our needs have altered. Obviously, I'm retired. I've been retired for 15 years. So um, it, it's quite a different setup. But we're very attached to this house, having been here so long. And our, our plan is to stay here until we die, I think. Um, by 2020, one in every two adults in Europe will be over the age of 50. What this means is that the growing numbers of older people will be living alone uh, or in communities. They will require higher levels of, of health and well-being input. And I think that the future home and the technologies associated with it can address some of these very important issues about how we care for our older citizens. Even if I'm stuck here, I've still got lots of things to do, you know. I've got a television, I've got the music, I've got the dogs, I've got the garden. And, and I'm, I've got a shop over the road, I'm not isolated. I, I've got, I know a lot of people around here because I've lived here for like 23 years and I've just moved around the corner. I think the big question for the future is, 
you know, what is a sustainable community? You know, how are we going to develop a housing model that is both inclusive and sustainable? Within that big question, there are a number of sub-questions in terms of, you know, what are the spaces, what are the technologies, the infrastructures that will allow this sort of new vision uh, to become a reality, uh, but not just become a reality, to change over time, to evolve as society evolves. So the types of container that we create and the types of communities we create have to be flexible and adaptable. I think a true smart home is one where the different pieces of the home work together. And it's not just technology, it is space, it is lighting, it's everything that comes together in a way that allows the person living there to, to enhance their life. The sense of light and space is, I think, very important because they, they choose their bit, they, they choose their, their own place. And sometimes they sit here on the, in the sun space on the balcony, they just look at the people who walk by or they have a book with them. Sometimes they're in the back room and sometimes they close the door and sometimes they don't. But they have, they all, there's these little corners that they make their own space. One of the biggest things for me is, is light. And the other thing that, I, that gives me the sense of well-being is being part of a community and yeah, a rich mix of uh, activities just on my doorstep and very good public transport links. Technology is allowing you to work more flexibly and it's getting smaller. So instead of a, a desktop computer, I have a laptop. And um, what I tend to do is take my laptop and my phone and go and find a cafe or whatever and go and, uh, go and sit and work. People in, in their lifestyles, not just at home, but within the city, want more flexible spaces. One of the important core areas for the future home is the issue around education and lifelong learning. The home will become uh, the nexus, it will become the site for learning, and more and more people will be undertaking uh, degree courses you know, in their, without ever setting foot on a campus. And we're going to have to design the domestic spaces they're going to facilitate that, that study. I think the future is about you know, reconceptualising the house as one node of a network of spaces, uh, spaces that are linked both physically and also through a range of, of different technologies. And where I think we have an interesting opportunity is to develop a, you know, a backbone, an infrastructure that will, will allow people to hang a whole bunch of different technologies off over time as their needs change. And, it's about creating an infrastructure or a utility in the same way of putting in water and gas and electricity that you know, allows all, you know, people to live in that house and use it in different ways. The notion of putting an information technology infrastructure and a services infrastructure at the same time it, you know, or retrofitting it to allow easier use uh, I think makes really good sense. Uh, but it's about creating the infrastructure rather than the end product. The whole idea of living smart is taking on, and must take on, a new definition. And one of the things that we definitely need to do is to understand more about what that smart will be. And it will be very culturally dependent. Because one solution does not fit all. One culture does not fit all. Thank goodness for that. And so therefore, living smart will be a reflection of place, of culture, and yet also a recognition of global community.